So okay guys, today I'm going to be explaining how I modified my SEMA 1911 AEP or the CM123 with a LiPo 7.4 volt battery and a MOSFET. Now with that said, before I continue on with my video, I just want to clarify one thing. If you've seen any other SEMA AEP wiring videos, the wiring that needs to be done on this particular pistol is 100% the same. So feel free to leave this video at any point if you wish to maybe get closer up video on what to do. However, with that said, if you were worried that your CM123 had different wiring because it has technically two switches in it, one for the safety, one for the trigger pull, there is actually nothing to worry about. If you can follow the wiring guide on one other SEMA brand AEP pistol, you can easily translate that over to this SEMA uh, pistol with no issue. But yeah, with that said, what all do you need to get this all done? In my particular case, I'm using a Jeffron 2 Micro MOSFET. This MOSFET is particularly good, and so far I'm, I'm really enjoying it. However, feel free to try any other MOSFETs out there. I heard the Perun MOSFETs are pretty good, although they're really tiny. Not that the Micro 2 isn't tiny. This thing is actually super tiny and left me with tons of space within my AEP. But yeah, besides that, you'll need a battery and some connectors and a charger. Overall, if I were to have bought a new nickel metal hydride battery and a new charger to replace my broken one, it would have cost more overall compared to the parts that I bought to replace it. So if you're sick of the nickel metal hydride batteries and want to try something different, for about the same price you can easily convert your AEP to use LiPo, and I gotta say, it has way more kick and it seems way more reliable overall. But yeah, with that said, on screen now is a picture of the before, uh, before I wired anything together to this AEP. In the after picture, the animation I'm going to have on screen is going to show you what I essentially did to change this in order to use my own uh, LiPo batteries in this. Essentially, it comes down to this. You want to cut the battery uh, or the motor negative wire, hook it up to the motor negative on the Jeftron 2 MOSFET, then you want to connect your battery negative connector to the battery negative on the MOSFET. Then from there you want to connect your signaling wire up to the switch on the AEP. Now if you're wondering which one of these sides of the switch you connect to, it's the one where the old battery positive would come through. You can either completely remove that old original uh, battery connector if you want. I left mine there. I'm going to be 3D printing a block so no one plugs in a nickel metal hydride battery into this thing. However, I would recommend just removing the original connector entirely. Other than that, you plug the positive of your LiPo battery connector to the positive of the motor. And essentially every time we push the switch, the switch gets some current through it which triggers our MOSFET which opens up the MOSFET to let current throw through into the rest of the gun. Essentially what this does is it drops down some of the voltage and the current so that you don't break your AEP pistol by over firing it. And if you're wondering, yes it's a MOSFET just like any other regular MOSFET, essentially what I described is a MOSFET with a dropout voltage, except there's some extra resistors and things on there and to fine tune the trigger pull and response rate of the gun itself. Overall it's a very easy conversion to be done and I wish I could have got this better captured on camera for you guys, but unfortunately I don't have a over the cam uh, camera rig to hold my camera while I solder and this thing was just really awkward to solder in as well as to film with. Other than that, I guess before I leave this video off I want to explain some things I would do differently. <coughs> And I also want to explain some things I think a novice in soldering should do differently. Now the first thing I wish I'd done different is get better connectors. I just got connectors that were compatible with the battery I had already ordered. However, the wiring that comes on these connectors is rather not flexible and it just feels really brittle. However, it seems to be handling things just fine right now. I'll be sure to update you guys on if it ever breaks and and any of the connections anywhere on the AEP because of this wiring. Other than that, to make things simpler for people that are just beginning to solder, I would recommend removing the spring and trigger uh, assembly entirely. And when I say trigger, I mean the, the, the one you'd pull to cock the gun essentially. 
If you remove both those things, you'll have clear access to soldering the two pads that you need to. But yeah guys, that's basically it for this video, and I suppose for the rest of the video, I'll have some b-roll of me firing this thing, and if you're wondering if the 7.4 volt LiPo made a difference with this AEP, I gotta say it definitely did. This thing shoots twice as far and twice as hard as it did when I had the nickel metal hydride battery. But yeah guys, I'm gonna leave this video off here now, DTBK signing off, peace. Fine on one side, however, on the other side, it won't sit flush. This can be easy. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not dead on MCC. In fact, you just need a little bit more force to do it.